I made a video last week on the Cooper GMV type of engines and uh, there was a few details in there that I thought needed a better explanation so I made a number of sketches and I'll show you and give you a little bit better explanation of certain features of the GMV engine. I've been running these things since 1980. I've run uh, GMXDs, GMVAs, GMVH and uh, there's, uh, there's another unit we have uh, at Judy Creek Fieldgate that actually incorporates a couple of the concepts from these engines into one unit. I'm not sure the designation of that particular unit. I need to take a trip up there to be honest. Yeah, five decades running these engines. So they're great engines. I just, I, I love the design of them. I love the simplicity of them. I love how rugged they are. They run 24-7, 365, and uh, there's not a lot of things you can look at. These things are 60 years old. Uh, some of these units that we have here actually might be older than 60 years. A little bit unsure on uh, manufacturing years of these units. I've been trying to find out, but haven't got any luck on that just yet. I still hope to. If someday I actually find out actual production dates, I'll provide that. Okay, we're going to start with a look at just a simplified schematic of the engine sketch that I did up here. The first thing of interest, um, the geometry of the engine. E each uh, GMV is a 10-cylinder engine, so you have five crankshaft throws, and each of them features this massive connecting rod that comes out to drive your compressor piston. That's the first thing. And then what was uh, such a great idea, a revolutionary idea, was to incorporate your power pistons articulating from the, the very same uh, connecting rod that the, the compressor runs on. So as this uh, crankshaft is turning and this rod is moving back and forth uh, as well as, uh, uh, you know, a motion this way, that is going to move these pistons up and down together. And, uh, yeah, so that's the first part. Uh, the piston is a 14 inch diameter with about a 14 and a half inch stroke. It's a two, uh, two cycle engine. Now, the second part that's of interest, that these engines use scavenging air. So you have an air intake port, pressurized scavenging air. And you have an exhaust port. There's no valves, simply porting. Uh, that really simplifies the design of the engine, makes it very rugged, less parts for maintenance, very simple. And what happens is, as this piston is, uh, you have your combustion stroke, the piston travels down, the energy is transmitted through the connecting rod to your crankshaft and, you know, thence to your compressor. Um, and as this piston comes down, once the exhaust port uh, is opened up, then the exhaust gas starts flowing out. Um, then what happens, once you, your air intake port opens up, now you have pressurized air going to come into the cylinder and sweep the uh, remaining exhaust gas out. Alright, but so back to this here. As I was saying, Scavenging air is simply providing a pressurized air intake into a two-stroke engine and you have porting for your intake, for your exhaust. Your piston travel is simply what opens and closes those ports. When your piston is traveling down, your exhaust uh, port opens, then your air intake opens, air comes in, blows out the remaining exhaust gas, uh, your piston starts traveling up, closes the intake and exhaust ports, then you, pr you compress the remaining air in there, uh, fuels e e uh, admitted, and then at 7 degrees before top dead center, approximately, you have your ignition, and then combustion occurs and your piston starts its uh, travel again. And back to this again, as I said, ten, it's a V10 engine, so five crankshaft throws, each one has this massive connecting rod that drives your compressor. 
uh, it's so you're rotating around your central main crankshaft here uh, this links into your crosshead your crosshead's connected to a rod to your compressor piston and then taking advantage of this to make this compact uh, revolutionary design Cooper Bessemer uh, connects the power pistons off the same connecting rod that's driving your compressor so as this is rotating around your, your pistons are at your piston motion here and it makes for a very simple compact rugged design so starting about and I don't have the exact eight, uh, years on this I tried to, I've been trying to find out when our units were built but I haven't gotten answers yet so uh, but the first major improvement in horsepower that Cooper came up with was called the GMXD and this is where you put a piston in the crosshead. In this design your air intake comes in through a manifold in the base of the engine frame. One thing about this when you uh, cast this massive uh, manifold right into the base of the engine it gives incredible rigidity and strength. It's a side benefit of it. Uh, so you have a single line coming in then five out that ports into the bottom of the crosshead on your five different uh, crank shaft throws. The air comes up, a piston here in the distance piece compresses that air and it pressurizes that scavenging air which comes up into your air intake. I, don't, I didn't bother to show it but uh, on the V10 engine you've got five uh, intakes on the one side and then you've, you've got jumpers that come across that go over the top of the engine to the opposite side air intake. Uh, anyway, uh, the GMXD produces approximately 110 horsepower per cylinder. Next. Okay, the next evolution after the uh, next step up from the GM XD is what's called the GM V8 and that's where they uh, put a supercharger on the engine basically an intake air compressor for your engine to uh, increase the volume of scavenging air you can produce and the uh, the one thing of course they didn't just make a supercharged engine and it worked perfectly they had to experiment with the design they had to, there were several modifications before they ultimately you know they arrived at one that uh, really worked effectively and the one uh, thing about it they're driven by a massive chain connected down to your uh, engine crankshaft so the, the design itself it requires horsepower robbed from your engine to operate this supercharger so it's parasitic in nature but it's this increase in horsepower from the GMXD type uh, <clears throat> it's up to 135 horsepower per cylinder uh, compared to the GMXD at 110 horsepower per cylinder. And we have uh, several of these units in our facility. <coughs> Next, the final evolution, and not the final final because uh, again, they, the next one though, up though is the turbocharged unit which is called a GMVH. And uh, when they first came out with this, of course, uh, 220 horsepower per cylinder and what happens your exhaust gas goes through a turbo charger there's a drive shaft from that directly to your compressor for your intake air and that intake air has two ports feeding the right and left banks of the engine and it's a big big increase in the volume of scavenging air you can produce on these engines uh, to where these are capable of 220 horsepower per cylinder and uh, eventually um, the evolution of the GMVH they, they got to where they could produce 300 horsepower per cylinder so 3,000 horsepower units that's, that's big horsepower um, and I guess the other thing to add because with the turbo, the turbocharger can actually overproduce scavenging air, so it has to have an automated uh, system for regulating the scavenging air pressure. 
basically uh, off the output of the scavenging air there will be a bypass a dump valve back into the air intake to to get rid of excess scavenging air which in really cold weather that that's uh, when you would have to have that right in the winter time when it's minus 30 anyway that's that's your three types GMXD, GMVA, GMVH all based off that same engine V10 engine geometry, compact design, incredibly rugged, two stroke, scavenging air, natural gas, what's not the like, 60 year plus run service on these things. They're beautiful.